Hi everyone, my name is Tegil and this is extra material for lesson 10. And in this video, we're gonna cover another Korean demonstrative determiner, which you don't have in English. So it should be quite interesting. And also it's super useful because the same words can be used in many different contexts, just like everything else that I teach you. So without further ado, let's get it started. So in the previous lessons, we learned how to say this or this and that or those. And finally today, we're gonna study the last demonstrative determiner, ku. Now this one is a bit tricky because it's something in between this and that. More precisely speaking, it indicates something that is or things that are relatively further away from the speaker while still being close to the listener. So let's recap here. Demonstrative determiner, cho. Uh, that we learned in lesson 9 is used when describing something that's far from both the speaker as well as the listener. Whereas ku is used to describe something relatively closer to the listener than the speaker. So it may be a little confusing at least in the beginning when you actually try to start using this because well, I think in English you just have that or those for both cases. But in Korean and Japanese, we actually have different words for them. But in any case, when you indicate something that's close to you, it's the same as in English. So whether or not it's also close to the listener, as long as it's close to the speaker, you say E. We learned it in lesson 10 as in this or this. Now, despite that the concept may be a little confusing, I would emphasize that it's still worth familiarizing yourself with this word ku because it's got other meanings and usages that are fairly useful. For example, ku can be used more or less like the definitive article of the in English, i.e. it can be used in the same way when referring to something that you already talked about or something that you and the other person already know. Now, you may have watched the video where I said that we do not have articles like the or a or an. And yes, it is true that we don't have the same concept of using articles in a systematic way like in European languages. But we do have words or ways to express such notions, although on an ad hoc basis only when they are necessary. And this word ku is one of such examples. Also just like cho can be used as the personal pronouns I or me, ku can be used as the personal pronouns, more precisely as the third person singular masculine personal pronouns he or him, and depending on the context it can also be used to mean it. And if you just add the suffix tul at the end, which makes nouns and pronouns plural, just like in English you guys have the suffix s or es at the end of words, if you say kudu, it can mean they or them. Now let's have a look at some examples using ku. First, we will see the examples of ku being used as that, as in that thing close to you. Imagine a situation where you are talking with someone and you point at something that the other person is wearing. So let's say that skirt, which is in this case on you, is chic. In Korean, this would be Another example may be that let's say the other person is wearing a blouse that is elegant. We already learned how to say something is elegant in lesson 10. There are a few ways to say it, but let's go with the easy ones. So to say that blouse is elegant, you can say 그 블라우스 엘레강스예요. 그 블라우스 엘레강스예요. Or 그 블라우스 엘리건트예요. 그 블라우스 엘리건트예요. Now let's have a look at the second usage of the word 그 which was the, as in the thing you and I know, or the thing we have talked about, or we are talking about right now. Let's say your friend starts talking about a famous influencer, and it's an influencer that you also know, and you find them fashionable. So to say that the influencer is fashionable, first get rid of the R sound at the end of the word influencer, and also change F from both influencer and fashionable, to P sound, so it becomes 그 인플루언서 패셔너블해요 
그 인플루언서 패션업을 해요. Now, as usual, I'll have you practice. So imagine a situation where you are talking about the shocking news that everybody knows. For the word news, we say news. And for the word shocking, we say shocking. So how would you say in Korean, that news or the news is shocking? 그 뉴스 쇼킹해요. 그 뉴스 쇼킹해요. Having said that, it's probably more likely that you say that news was shocking as in the past tense. So I will tell you how to uh, make heyo to past tense here. Now the easiest way for me to explain is that you add so between he and yo. I know that it's a little more complicated than that when you look at how it changes on Hangul, the Korean alphabet. But for now, we're just gonna think of it as as if it's an infix, a word that you insert in between. So. 했어요. And this means that for all the expressions that we have learned so far and will learn in the future involving 해요, you can simply replace 해요 to 했어요 to make it into the past tense. Simple, right? Okay, so for practice, let's say that news or the news was shocking. 그 뉴스 쇼킹했어요. 그 뉴스 쇼킹했어요. Now finally, let's say that you watched a famous singer's stage performance and you happen to talk about it with a Korean who has also watched it. Say that performance or the performance was powerful in Korean because we actually use that expression a lot in real life. And here, please don't forget to change the pronunciations of the words. Drop the R's at the end of syllables and change the F sound to P sound. Okay, The performance was powerful. 그 퍼포먼스 파워풀했어요. 그 퍼포먼스 파워풀했어요. All right, that's it for this video. In the next lesson, we'll continue studying more new English adjectives used in Korean and a simple trick that will enable you to be the creator of new adjectives in Korean. So don't miss it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.